Hey, man, what's going on? So uh, welcome to part two of our the mind map uh, on how we as professional real estate investors uh, solve sellers' problems creatively. Follow me? Notice what I said. Solving problems creatively. All right? Again, to be, to be redundant, if all you got is, gee, myself, well, I sure want to help you, but I could, what I got to do is buy your house at 7% of the ARV, less repairs, and golly gosh, gee, I need an assignment fee too. Well, you know. Again, will that work? Maybe. You know, has it worked for me? Sure has. Have I made a lot of money to do it? Sure have. But I tell you what, in a tough market, when the market's hot, meaning that it's a seller's market, it's awful hard if that's all you got. Because sometimes somebody owes too much. What if they need too much, right? They still want to sell their home. They're motivated. But they're not motivated enough to sell it for, you know, 70% of the ARV, can they, right? Do you follow me? Or, or maybe they can't. They owe too much. George's wife has died, and he, you're, you know, he had to take out a big second on his house to pay for hospice. And, you know, you're trying to get it for 210 and it's worth 300 or 350 and, you know, he owes 280 And he really wants to move to Miami. He's so lonely, he wants, you know, to get to the family. Well, does your strategy work? Well, I mean, it would work if he had 80 grand to bring to closing. Does he have 80 grand? Oh, he doesn't? Oh, well, then that didn't work, did it? No one. Okay, so that's the whole point. Okay, so this is part two. Again, what we're going to do is solve problems craving. So watch this here. Share my screen. I'm super high tech. Everybody, you can tell me fussing around this thing. All right, I'm going to put my glasses on because bad eyesight all right so watch this uh all right so this is a price of terms always you follow me you see, this, see the screen okay this is your seller we talked yesterday about we always offer price or term cash at a discount or terms you want you want full price for your house uh mr seller great i, I can do that uh i can just gotta buy, buy it you know over over time you know all right so we're, we we talked yet but we're going to focus on right now the, the price time, the, the price is, is the cash discount. Okay. We can close next week, you know, but we got to buy it at a discount. Okay. And so the, the first one is we, we went through yesterday. Part one was, was cash uh, discount offer. If you have not seen that video, I would encourage you to do so because it explains what is all involved with the cash discount offer. Okay. And this cash discount offer is, is a typical wholesale deal that you're probably familiar with. The sixth one's, an awesome strategy called the, the, can you so the question is you want they want to buy that they want to sell a home uh you know and, and, and get a and quick cash okay well you can do it at a cash discount but also look can you split the lot what do i mean by splitting a lot okay well i'm glad you asked look at this boom whoa there's a lot here isn't there there is okay boom this is what lot splitting is okay Essentially, every house in America, talking about real estate, I'm not talking about houseboats, but real, <laughs> real estate, they're on land, okay? Right? I'm talking about houseboats or whatever. It's, the, the houses on land. And that land sometimes can be split. Not all the time, but oftentimes it can be, okay? Depending on the lot, okay? Operative word is administrative lots, but it's split at the administrative level. So this is a question we're gonna we're, we're gonna we, you want to look at whenever you get a piece of land. Okay, number one is it in the city or is it in the county? Why does that matter? Because each city is going to be different, each county is going to be different, and, and and the rules for planning and zoning are going to be different. Okay, so you need to know that. Is it hard to do? It's not hard. You just need to you know reach out to the planning and zoning and ask them. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's what we're going to do. We're talking, we're going to talk about lot splits here. Okay. And that's, that's what this mind is. So the first question is, it let's just say it's in the county. Okay. All right. So you want to check what you plan in zoning. How do you do that? Well, you, you can Google it, whatever, uh, go down, but more, more importantly, go down there probably and, and talk to them. Uh, especially if you have a bigger county, a lot of people there, it might be uh, easier to go down there in person. And what we're looking for specifically is an administrative lot split, okay? And what we're, what we're concerned about is splitting the lot in two, okay? You have a house on land, okay? 
and the land so be. Let's say it's, uh, you know, on, on, especially we're dealing with a, a county, maybe it's two acres. You have a house. So could you split the lot maybe in half? So you have a house on one acre, then you have a buildable lot on, the, on another acre, okay? But what's driving this train here is, again, can, it, can, you, can you do a split, okay? Is it eligible for a building permit? That's what's driving the train. If you can split the lot, but you can't do the, the lot you've split off is not eligible for a building permit, that's just, this is a complete waste of time, right? You follow me? Because the money is being able to have a building lot so you can then put a lot, you can build a house on there or even a manufacturing home on there. Does that make sense? That's the value, okay? So you want to check that out, okay? And if it is not, okay, if, if, if you ask the city, the county and the county says, uh, no, no, you're not. Um, you, you, this is not eligible for a building permit uh, if, if you split it. Okay. Well, uh, a great strategy is, as you can see here, is is we don't want to give up. Is the city, is this county lot, how you know, house the lot, is it in the city impact area? You always want to check the map. Okay. If it's in the city impact area, this is what we're going to do. Okay, we want to talk to planning and zoning and see if we can annex that lot into the city. Okay, that's a powerful strategy. Do you see what I just told you? Okay, if you can annex that property into the city, now the city, you're not governed by what the, what the county says. Oh, there's no, you can't split the lot, all right? But the, but the city says, oh yeah, you can split it four times. It's our zone R4. Now you got four lot splits. Does that make sense? And if each lot is worth 50 grand, you just made $200,000. You see what I just told you? Annex the, the, the if you can, I'm saying you do it all the time, but if you can annex the, this, the, this county lot into the city and the city, it's this, this lot is zoned you know, R4, R6, even R2, you can you have do multiple lots and make a lot more money on the deal. Okay, so that's that's the question you're going to look at. But let's, let's, before we get to the, Synex annexation, let's go back up to what it's, what's this going to take, okay? So let's say in this in the county, you have a house on a lot. You see, can I do an administrative lot split? Can I split the lot at the administrative level? I mean, somebody at the planning and zoning department allows you to do this. They say, yes, this is what's going to be involved, okay? Because again, what, what, what the value of having a buildable lot is it has to be buildable, right? And so this is what we're going to talk about, what, what needs to be done to know if it's a deal or not. Does that make sense? So what you're going to be dealing, dealing with, there's a lot here, okay? You're going, to, you're going to need a good surveyor, a surveyor who knows what he's doing, okay? And how you survey the land, and you go out there with your surveyor. And, and again, you can have this be done at closing with your seat. So you, bottom line, this is, this is how it works, okay? In a scenario like this. You get a house on a contract, knowing full well that you can split the lot, okay? What, what's going to happen is you, you find Joe, so the, the, that, the, and the deal looks good. Uh, so you reach out to Joe Rehaber. Hey, Joe, I got this deal. Joe likes to deal. You assign your equitable interest uh, to Joe the Rehaber. And so what happens is this. Joe the Rehaber, you know, he gives you five grand or whatever assignment fee. And then he's going to wire his cash for this deal to the escrow account title company, okay? Now, in escrow here, he's only gonna buy the house and have the lot. And this is full disclosure. You're not pulling the wool over Joe the Rehabber's eyes or anybody. You just tell him this is, Joe the Rehabber, you're buying this house and have the lot because I'm gonna split it. And Joe's like, cool, because the numbers work. Up the word is the numbers work. Okay, so Joe the Rehabber, you know, he's cool. Uh, and so his, his funds are gonna fund the house and have the lot. And you, because you're clever, are gonna do this administrative lot split in escrow so you're gonna have two separate legal descriptions two separate parcel numbers that are recorded at closing so the, at closing the joe the rehabber he gets the house i have the lot and you got a build a lot that you own free and clear okay so that's what we're talking about in this scenario so to do so you're going to get a surveyor well surveyor costs money yeah they do okay so you have that paid at, at through escrow okay you follow me so you're gonna get a, a surveyor to know i'm gonna split the lot right here kind of you need to look about utilities. If you're going to get a free lot, what is what's involved? Well, you need to get power. Okay, where's power coming from? 
you need to know where the transformer is. Okay, is it above ground? Uh, and and, and, and again, if, if you have, if you're just going to be selling a two hundred thousand dollar home or fifteen hundred fifty thousand dollar home, you can have power that comes. You know, you, you see them. You know, maybe your house comes like a power uh, comes across. You know, over over the ground, right? But if you if you're trying to do a million dollar house, half a million dollar, maybe even a eight hundred thousand dollar home. You might want to look at below ground comps, meaning so that just the power goes under the ground, so there's not these big, huge power lines. Does that make sense? And that's going to be uh, part of what you need to connect with your real estate agent with. Like, what is the highest and best use for this lot? What can I build here, right? And so you want to make sure that it's it's a it's a good you know, you, you see what I'm saying? Is it is it worth uh, spending the extra money? Uh, will you get more value? If, if, if you put the, the power underground, if it doesn't matter, then don't worry about it. Okay. That's something you need to be concerned about. Okay. Water, where are you getting your water from? There's a lot here. Okay. In town, it'll be municipal water uh, company. It, you know, maybe the owned by the city or quasi city, quasi government, whatever. What's the hookup cost? All right. You might be in a situation when you do a lot split, you're in a community well situation. Okay. Community well is, Association of folks done much videos on these where um, there's one well that serves you know 50 people whatever and you got to buy into it and all that kind of thing. There's a big it's a it's an LLC and anyway I'm not a big fan of those things. But anyways, yeah they got those okay and what's that kind of cost? And it might be a buy-in. Maybe you got to pay 20 grand just to connect because they they put all this money in an escrow account kind of thing. So when the well breaks and they need money, they have all this cash to fix it. Okay, you follow me? So what is it? You need a well. Okay. Um, or is it a shared well? What's the difference between a community well and a shared well? A shared well is just a well, you know, and typically two people share it, two houses kind of thing, right? And you want to have a copy of the shared well, well agreement. Well, has it been recorded? Just because there's a handshake between Billy, Billy Bob and Sam Jones next door, uh, you know, and you're, you're getting this lot, you, you know, you, you, got, you want to make sure it's recorded. If, you, if it's not recorded, then whoever's in the whoever ends up buying this house may not get any water, uh, and uh, it'd be a big problem. Also, it find it for finances. So when you have so you have a build a lot, you want to build on it. Let's say, and you do that. Either you build on it, or you you assign it to a buyer builder, and they're going to sell that house right lot with a house on it. You know, whoever is buying that lot, okay is going to be getting a loan and no lender is going to lend on the house without a recorded shared well agreement. Okay. They, the lenders want to know that there's water getting to the house. Does that make sense to you? So that's just very important information. Okay. Maybe it's an individual well. Okay. Well, okay. So what does that mean? You got to build, put a well in there. Either you or somebody else is going to have to do it. And if you're going to wholesale this lot to somebody or even retail a lot on MLS, even though you own a free and clear to get the most amount of money on this deal, you need to know, you know, you need to know what it's going to cost, what's involved to get the well on there. Well, so it's like a lot of work. You know what, man? So is, so is life, you know, so, so is real estate. I mean, that's just part of work. Of course it's work. You know, if it's too much work, then I wouldn't do it. I'm, you're probably not thinking that, but I, some of the people tell me that it's a lot of work. Well, yeah. What I'm taught, this isn't like get rich quick. This is like, this is how to be wise and this is how to know what you're looking for, okay? You want to make money? This is how you make money, okay? So uh, your individual well, you want to know it's going to be governed by the Water Resources Board, board and there's well guys, well, you know, well drillers. It's, they, they're licensed professionals and they know how to get permits, all that kind of stuff. They, they're kind of liaison for them. So you hire them uh, you, they, or they'll give you a bid and they're going to have a well log, and so that meaning that they're going to look at your your lot that you're going to buy at, and they're going to look and they're going to see the lots areas around next door. And they're going to have a bit, an idea how deep the what the water will be, the water tables will be. They'll give you a bid. Okay, the deeper the well, the more expensive it's going to be. I've done a 550 foot well on a hill one time, and it was 40 grand. Kind of. Well, it's a lot of money. Yep, sure is. But I bought the property for 50 grand and I sold it for 300, 400. Somebody. So was it a good deal? Yeah, sure was. Do I care? I spent 50 grand on a well? Nope. Then it made a lot of money. Does that make sense? So it's 
So you can buy a well driller, you want to know the depth of the water table, size of the pump, power of the wellhead pump, all this stuff. Well, there's no power out there. We got to make sure you know what the power is going to be. Okay. All right. Another question they always ask is, can you do a shared well agreement with the neighbor? Yes. Oh, cool. Talk to the neighbor. Hey, man, I give you a couple thousand bucks. Could uh, we do a shared well agreement? You know? Boom. Do that. A couple thousand dollars cheaper than 15, 20 grand, right? Maybe give them five grand. You know, I don't know. Maybe not. But that's ask. Okay. Uh, if he says no, they have to.